everyone, how's it going? It's Scott here from Ken Geek Games and Collectibles, welcoming you to Ken Geek's Let's Play of Fate Accelerated from Evo Hat Productions. We are playing a homebrewed RPG, uh, the As Fate Would Have It campaign. I am once again joined by Chris, Anthony, and Greg. Uh, we are going to very quickly recap the first half of day number two from last week's session, and then we're going to jump right into this. So, last week uh, we saw your group move from Heinrich's burned out shell of a mansion to this movie theater. Um, Maya discovered that Heinrich's got some spare parts laying around that <laughs> need some explanation somewhere down the road. Um, you guys were faced with a decision to make. Were you going to go and follow up with the Cloviers, Bernie and Bernie? Or were you going to go and try and figure out what Clint Dufresne has to do with these individuals that jumped you at the library? Um, you opted to go and, you know, figure out what Clint Dufresne has to do with all of this. Um, when you got there, um, Maya and Pete went into the cafe. Pete got the drop on a couple of Dufresne's guys and effed them up like only Pete could. Um, you guys ultimately apprehended Dufresne trying to make a getaway. Uh, Pete locked him in a submission and threw him into the back of your metallic blue SUV. Uh, just in time for Joseph Uzma to show up with a group of individuals barking out instructions for these individuals to find Dufresne and his men and to kill them all. Um, so where we concluded last week's game session saw all of you jumping into this SUV with an unconscious Clint Dufresne and making your getaway. Of course, Uzma did see Pete in the passenger's <laughs> seat of that uh, SUV as you made your getaway and screamed some obscenities at you as you, doing took, this too. <laughs> yeah, as you, as you took off. Now, a uh, couple quick pieces of housekeeping. Pete, I'm going to remind you that Heinrich injected you with a stimulant. Uh, that stimulant has you feeling like your old self right now. However, he has warned you that there are going to be some side effects in about four hours. Now, you're injected with that stimulant around 7, 7.30 in the morning. Um, your encounter with Dufresne took place around 9, 9.15 in the morning. To establish a timeline, we are going to clearly say now that by the time you threw Dufresne into the back of your SUV and took off, uh, it was about 9.40 a.m. So in about 80 minutes, you've got a surprise coming, according to Heinrich. Um, on, on, a, on a side note, very quickly, I want to remind everybody, this is a brand new game session. Your fate points refresh at free as of this session, except for Heinrich, who currently is sitting on four fate points, okay? Because he had one left over before last session. So Maya and Pete, you each have three. Heinrich, right now, you have four fate points. Uh, now that that bit of housekeeping is cleared up, let's jump right into this. So. You have sped away from Clint Dufresne's cafe with a very upset Joseph Uzma screaming obscenities at you as you speed away. Um, your next order of business at this point in time is to find somewhere where you can have a chat with Clint Dufresne. I need to know, Heinrich, you're at the wheel of this vehicle. Where are we going? have another safe house somewhere. Zoom, I have safe houses everywhere. I don't understand this. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, for shites and giggles, let's go back to where we started. Go back to the warehouse that uh, 
you know, that um, we uh, started this adventure in. Okay. So Because let, let's think about this here. When, that's like the last place that would look for us, right? Yep. Because oh. they've already been, I mean, <laughs> we've already been there. They, they've already done, you know, terrible things there. The place should be spotless and cleaned up by now. I think that's probably a good place to hide for now. Okay. What so, do you guys think? Yes. Oh, they could have somebody guarding there. Really? Guarding a warehouse that's already had a massacre in it? Yeah, no. I doubt it. I doubt mm -hmm. it. Seriously. I think it would be a good place to go and a good place to jog Dufresne's memory as yeah. to why we were there in the first place because we don't know still how we got involved in all of this. We just woke up and like, what? Run. Exactly. So let's do that. Okay. Yes, so good idea. That drive to that warehouse is going to take you about 15 minutes. So you're you're approaching 10 o'clock. It's about 9.55 when you pull up in front of that warehouse. Um, do you see any police activity in front of that warehouse? Nope. Is quiet. Just some police tape. But that's it. Yeah, okay. Um, so you can either try and go into the warehouse from the front entrance, or you can try and sneak in the same way you ran out a couple of nights ago. Which way are you going in? Where we got out. Why would we want to go the other way? We don't know what's, you know, if it's been trapped, right? Perfect. Okay. Um... Who's going into the warehouse first, and who has Dufresne? I'll we'll drag Dufresne. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's the muscle, Kenny's the muscle. Yeah, so Dufresne is still unconscious, so drag will be the operative term here, Pete. Uh, what order are the three of you entering this warehouse in? Oh. No, Heinrich, you go first. You go first. Probably be last because I'm dra dragging Dufresne. Fine, I'll, I'll go first. Okay, <laughs> hey, jeez, it's like you don't trust me. Well, I wonder why. No, Maybe I'm... you can think back to that first day and remember what happened. Who tried to use me, little me, as a human shield? Yes. Thank you, sir. And you go first. Well, this time you're the shield. You go Fine. first. Fine. Yes. All right. Go up the side door. Open it up. Let's take a look. Yeah. So you open up the side door. Um, the hallway that that side door exits off of into the alleyway is in pure darkness. Well, let's see. Pure darkness. Uh, let's see if I got a lighter on me. You can either use a lighter, you can fumble around and see if find you can a find switch? a light switch. Well, use a lighter to find a light switch first. Uh -huh. Okay, do you have a lighter? Good question. You, yeah, you tell me whether you have one or not. Hmm. Hey, Maya, you got a lighter? I know, I don't smoke. You don't need to smoke to have a lighter. Okay. Why All would right. I have a lighter if I don't smoke? So my... Simple solution. Check the glove compartment of the car. Let's see. Is there... Let's see. My okay. pistol. Okay. Take my pistol. And lighter. Yay, lighter. Yay. All right. So grab lighter and pistol from my uh, from the glove compartment. Wander over. Yep. And yeah. Use mm -hmm. the lighter to, see, to get a little bit of light to see if I can find a, uh, you know, light switch. Okay, perfect. So flick, flick. Um, yep, uh, you wave the lighter around a little inside the entrance and just off to one side, you do discover a light switch. Uh, so you flick it on and slowly but surely <laughs> fluorescent tubes begin to flicker on with that annoying hum sound that only fluorescent... Zombie lights! Out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zoop. <laughs> Suddenly you have light. Shum. Oh, all right. So Let that be light. There is nothing to speak of in this hallway that you need to be concerned about. It's, you know, 
clear. From, it's a hallway. Yeah, it's yeah. clear from one way it's to boring. the other. <laughs> yep. Okay. So All right. Do you head Main down, room. Yeah, you head down the hallway. Uh, you get to the other end of the hallway. There is the door that enters into this big warehouse space. Uh, there is a little bit of police tape across the door um, advising people not to break the line or cross the line. So. <laughs> Do you cross it? Yes. Okay. So Heinrich is in the lead. I'm assuming Heinrich breaks the tape. You guys walk in. Yeah. You uh <laughs> you head into the room. Um the room for the most part is in darkness, other than um outside light that is illuminating through these dirty window panes that run the length of the warehouse on both sides at the top of the building. So basically you have the roof, windows, and then wall on both sides. So the only lighting you're getting is external lighting through dirty windows that are at least 10 feet up. <coughs> Now, as you enter... No lights the in the warehouse? Pardon me? No lights in the warehouse? Have you looked for a light switch yet? Not yet. Then I'm You think it'd be by the door. Well, are you looking for a light switch? Yes, look for a light switch. Okay. So, uh, you wander around the room for a minute or two, and finally you find a light switch. Click, and same thing. Ugly, noisy, fluorescent lighting begins to flicker to life. Um, as the lights turn on, you notice police evidence markers are littering the floor of the warehouse in different spaces um, where you remember, or at least you think you remember, that when you woke up there a couple of nights ago, these are places where there were bodies originally. Okay, so mm -hmm. there has been an investigation that's taken place. Outlines. In mm -hmm. Chalk outlines. Yep. Are there any circles for bullets? No. So just chalk outlines of the uh, bodies. Chalk outlines and evidence uh, numbered evidence markers. Uh-huh. Okay. So all right. Um time to grab a chair. Yep. Uh you look around the room, you find a chair, and it's time for someone to drop Dufresne in that chair. And tie him up. Let's not have a repeat of the last the time. I let you like interrogate somebody? Hell, just like last time, you you were able to uh, hmm, uh, let someone kill themselves. No <laughs> hints. Okay, so. Uh, well, why don't you examine him for any false teeth that he might grind and kill himself with? Well, wow, I that's care. Right. Okay, so. So he doesn't kill himself is, before he interrogates him. Is someone going to do that examination of Dufresne? The sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> so. Um, Anybody seen the movie Marathon Man? Yeah. Okay, so Heinrich. <laughs> so I'm guessing on goes the door. Hey, was his name Heinrich in the movie too? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on goes the glove. So you've got to do an examination of Dufresne if you want to make sure that he's not hiding anything. Oh, he's uh, hiding something, but, you know, it's just not necessarily in any uh, available orifice. Ah! <laughs> uh -huh. All right, drop no. his pants! <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. You drop him. Uh, okay. Well, check his mouth. Okay. So... Old fillings. Oh, oh, hold on. So, you stick your finger in his mouth and begin to root around looking for you know, a false tooth that might be hiding something. Um, give me a quick row, please, Heinrich. Okay. 
Ugh. FD. All right. Three pluses and a minus, so plus two on my uh, quick, which, uh, where's my quick? I think my quick was fairly high. Um, I have your quick listed at being a two. Yes, quick is at two, so total is a four. Okay, you stick your finger in there, and you quickly yank it out. Just before Dufresne snaps his jaw down and tries to bite your finger off. He looks at the three of you as he begins to regain consciousness. And he spits right in Heinrich's face. He uh, says, my hand's still in front of his face. So he's oh, spitting nice. into my hand. Yeah, that's fine. You can. That's block. okay. Then yeah. now I take two fingers, put it up his nose. <laughs> Ew. Sure. What? Yeah. Oh, this oh. is interrogation. No, 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 that's fine. You know what? I'm going to give you that. Give Thanks, me your another, fingers. Give, give me another quick roll, please. Plus two. So total oh. four. Okay. You managed to jam your fingers directly up Dufresne's nose. And he tightens up his entire face you can obviously see he's in a lot of discomfort as he starts spasming and twitching in the chair up his nose. of course he's in that yeah exactly he's trying to get your fingers out he can't you know he's restrained so all you've succeeded in doing here now is pissing him off which is kind of <laughs> the point mm -hmm. go ahead yep so i i'm glad you're awake so, Mr. Dufresne, why'd you set us up? Are your fingers still up his nose? Yes. So, he'll be talking like that. Yep. He spouts out. <laughs> they tell you sons of bitches anyway. Okay, well, I guess we'll just give him back to Dufre uh, give him back to Ozma. Do you make that threat? Well, guys, what do you think? You know, I mean, I have no problem giving them back to Oswald. We can just leave them here tied up and make a call. So, Dufresne, yeah. looks, Dufresne looks directly at you, Pete. Okay. He turns <clears throat> his head in just such a way. Heinrich, do me a favor. Give me one more quick row. Uh, Minus one, uh, minus one on my two, so a quick one. Okay. He turns his head in just such an angle that he manages to slip one of your two fingers out of his nose, okay? So you've still got a hold of one nostril, but the other finger comes out of one side. So we're going to say that the left-hand side of the nostril is now empty. Um, he looks directly at Pete, and he says, Go ahead. Give me back to... Uzma, does not matter to me, because if I talk, I'm a dead man either way. You fucked everything up. For you anyway. You're dead. He killed everyone else. You're, you're dead. You're just lucky we saved your ass. I could, of course, give you an out. He looks back at you, Heinrich. He says, there is nothing you can do or offer me to save me from what's coming if i can offer you a new face a new body and a dead body to hide you with he thinks about this for a split second and then he looks at you as he shakes his head and he says boy if only you knew what you were dealing with i don't so why don't you enlighten me? And I can give you what I can. <laughs> Nothing short of death will get me to talk. So whether you kill me, or Uzma kills me, or they kill me, I'm dead any way I cut it. 
Who's they? He so you're cutting up pretty good, Scott. He realizes the moment you ask that question that he slept. He mm. fights down on his bottom lip <clears throat> and he shakes his head and he says, I'm not talking. So, Heinrich, do you have other ways that you can maybe extract this information? I mean, you of guys... I've you, got happy juice. Yeah, I mean, you've got <laughs> you as a doctor, you've got Pete as a trained... No, 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 no. I'm not just a doctor. I'm an unethical doctor. There's a mm -hmm. difference. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a... Um... <laughs> You can't Thanks beat stuff like this out of somebody. You have to use subtlety. Oh, yeah. I... And fun drugs. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have your doctor's bag with you? Of course I do. Okay. Um, do me a favor. This guy was carrying the lug. Yeah. I'm carrying my doctor's bag. Give me <laughs> a clever row, Heinrich. Plus two on my clever of three. So five. Okay. I'm not just clever, I'm brilliant. Yeah. So <laughs> no. <laughs> you you deduce very quickly as Dufresne is sitting there strapped to a chair, shaking his head and biting his bottom lip with as much force as he possibly can, that he's not gonna talk. At least not without some motivation and so far the motivation you've offered is not enough to convince him to talk it's okay bit of sodium pentothal let's see um what else is good hmm. i was just gonna say can't you give him something to make him well okay so the, the fun thing about sodium just pentothal again? is unlike in the movies it's not a truth serum it just makes you really happy and want the person to be your friend Mm -hmm. So um, it isn't actually a truth drug. It just makes them want to tell you everything that they, you know, they, they think you want to hear. So sodium pentothal, in, in some cases, is good, but you gotta, you know, there's there's other drugs. There's other things. Okay. So things that I've experimented <laughs> on. So here, here's <laughs> what I need to know from you, Heinrich, and this is important now. Are you going to use any drugs to try and extract this information from Dufresne? And I specifically need to know which approach you are going to attach this to. So you've got careful, clever, flashy, forceful, quick, and sneaky. You have to tell me which one you are attaching this to. It's going to be on clever. Okay. Um, I'm going to be using a uh, one of my modified drugs. Sodium pentothal base. But again, it's a modified drug. Um, you know, part of my wonderful car uh, uh, pharmacopoeia of your know, joy. And yeah. Okay. Uh, grab a patch, see if he's allergic. Uh, once you find out if he's allergic or not. Okay. Um, I am going to give you the ability to invoke an aspect on this. Okay. Um, I need you to slap that patch on him, your aspect that you are going to invoke. You're going to tell me if Dufresne is allergic to this or not. And um, Allergic. He is allergic? Is not. Is not. Okay, perfect. All right, so Heinrich, you are going to invoke an aspect on Dufresne. It is going to cost you one fate point, okay? Sure. So you're down to three fate points. The aspect you're invoking is you are making sure that Dufresne is not allergic to your specialized sodium pentafol before you hit him with this. Um, how are you administering this medication? Is it an injector or what are you doing? Okay, so you're hitting him with a needle. All right. So, um, how long will this take to uh, start to affect him? Take about five minutes. 
five minutes. Okay, so, um, well, the... While the five minutes are elapsing, Pete, uh, you need to find out what time it is. Uh, you pull out your cell phone. You look at the time. It is about 10 after 10 in the morning. And I need you to give me a... I can fail it. I'd like you to give me a clever row, please, Pete. What did I say? Okay, what's your clever? One. Oh, no. Okay. Minus three. Minus three. Okay. But I can fail that. <laughs> okay. Um, you look at the time. <laughs> There you go. Oh. Still pretty early. And uh, you put your phone back and you wait for Heinrich to do his job. So Heinrich, your five minutes goes by. It's now about 10.15 in the morning. Dufresne seems to be a little more susceptible to your line of questioning. Um, you want to approach this again? Why not? Okay. Unless, you know, we want someone with a female wiles to do this. Okay, so, here's... Uh, well, here's... you can start off, and I'll ask a few questions, too. Don't worry. Okay, fine. I'll show some leg. Okay. Fine. So... I'll show some leg. <laughs> yeah, you, you show some leg first. He'll talk. But then he's going to talk. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Heinrich, I need you to walk us through your interrogation of Dufresne, but I need you to attach it to whatever approach you are using. So, uh, clever? Out, you're using clever? Okay, so yeah. you cleverly begin to question Dufresne. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. Dufresne, what's your name? Clinton Douglas Dufresne. Is that really your name? Yeah, it's really my name, but everyone calls me Crazy Clint. Why do they call you crazy? Because for you to be willing to do the things I do and make the deals I make, you'd have to be crazy. So what kind of deals are we talking about? What's the craziest deal you've ever done? I once smuggled Oh, please can't. I once smuggled an endangered animal from the Horn of Africa into the country for one of my clients. Only, was... oh, only so that client could save himself some money on a planned hunting excursion. I'll do anything for money, and even more for power. Wait. Mm. Was it delicious? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. <coughs> I digress. Okay, so, then in that case, maybe you could tell me, you know, our conversation earlier, you mentioned a they. Who's they? He begins to tighten up. He begins, he really begins to tighten up. I thought you said you'd do anything for money. I thought you do said you'd do anything for power. And here it is. You're not willing to do anything for anything. He, he looks at you, he goes, I will do anything for money or power. That's why they call me Crazy Clint. You're obviously not crazy enough. We can't call you crazy, Clint. He, Common Clint, maybe. He you begins know? to really show signs of strain now. Like, he's getting very agitated. Um, give me one second here. Okay. Free. Anthony. Mm-hmm. I need you to give me a clever row, please. 
Uh, clever plus one, four. Okay. You get the sense that he's purposely holding back on your last line of questioning, almost shocking Heinrich at Dufresne's ability to fight off the effects of your sodium pentafol. Modified. That's fine, even modified. Specifically, when you start questioning him about um, who they are, he starts to get very resistant. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Give me one more clever row, please. Clever plus zero, three. Okay. You're beginning to question whether or not you should give him another shot. No, another shot won't help. At this point, we make him high as a kite. Because that what you do is you create uh, an... Un right now, he's inhibited. So what you do is you release his inhibitions by historically they would you know uh, you know get someone drunk. Yeah. Uh, we don't really have time for that. So just then, I guess we could just pipe him up with some happy juice and yeah. So know. then I will tell you now, Heinrich, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the information you want from Clint Dufresne with that one shot of sodium pentafol. Okay, um, he is resistant to lines of questioning from people who will screw with his loyalty <clears throat> to those who will keep him gainfully employed. He's already... Makes me? sense because that doesn't make sense because he's already on a hit list for you know and marked for death. He is so by Joseph that... by Joseph Uzma. By Uzma. Uh -huh. By Uzma. You know that Uzma's trying to kill him. Mm, specifically, yeah. specifically Uzma. Yeah. Okay. Is there another way, Heinrich, that you can approach this line of questioning of Giffray? Can you not well, offer him money instead of a new face? Something more realistic? Something he will understand more? No, he's already made it perfectly clear to the three of you before Heinrich hit him with this that Nothing you have to offer him will, in his mind, save his life from what you have found yourselves in the middle of. You're going to have to come up with another approach. But he also said that he would do anything for money and power. Yeah, yes, he did. You're right. So the question, Maya, actually, Maya, you know what? Let's do this. Um, I want you to give me a clever role, please. Oh, um, okay, hold on. Okay. Let's see, I've got a minus and two pluses, so that's a one plus three. My clever is four right now. Awesome. So, Maya, as you are watching Heinrich question Dufresne, and you are noticing that Dufresne is becoming very resistant when Heinrich questions him about who they are. You have a funny thought enter your head. And the thought that you have enter your head is, Dufresne said he'll do anything for money and power, but he also said that it doesn't matter what Heinrich offers him, None of you can protect him from what's coming if he talks and what the <laughs> three of you have found yourselves trapped in the middle of, okay? So you begin to realize that maybe this needs to be approached differently. Now, you have a doctor with you that has a doctor's bag. Who knows what he has in that bag? You have a individual that seems to have a background in black ops, and then yourself as a archaeologist. 
there, there has to be someone amongst the three of you that can come up with a different way of convincing Dufresne to talk. Well, showing like it is in, in it, huh? <laughs> no. Oh boy. They start with his thumbs. Maybe you want to suggest to Heinrich. George Church. Maybe you want to suggest to Heinrich that maybe the sodium pentafol isn't working, and maybe there's something else in his bag that he might want to come up with. Like there's torture. a lot of things in the bag that I can come up with. Half of it will kill him. That's the other half. And what about the other half? What would the other half do? Well. Or the other half make him more Very, very happy. Maybe <laughs> happy. Maybe he needs to be a little happier. So, Let's get on with it. So here's what I'm going to say to you guys. This is in game. Maya needs to find a way to suggest this to Heinrich. And Heinrich has to weigh the options here because Dufresne is convinced already that he's a dead man. <laughs> ah, yes, I can do this. All right, Dufresne, I guess I'll grant you your wish. I'll let you die. <laughs> uh, I go so, into my so bag. Do you say that directly to him, Heinz? Yes, I Perfect. say that. I, so, I, uh, I say that directly to, to Clint. Oh, okay, so he seems to kind of sober up for a minute, and he goes, Well, it might be preferable to what's coming for all of us. <laughs> Go into the bag and look for um, uh, a vial. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and the biggest horse needle I have. Big motherfuckers, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go for a little tiny vial, big horse needle. Extract yep. a little bit. Peep, peep, peep. And uh, okay, so okay. what's in that vial? Yes. Now, I need to ask right now: Are you invoking another aspect? Um, basically, what I'm going to be injecting him with is an anesthetic. An anesthetic. Yes. Okay. To accomplish what? To knock him out. To knock him out. He wants to die. Let's let him die. So, all right. How do out we of game, get answers? Out of game for a moment. Yep. Plan in my character's head is to knock him out, fill him full of happy juice, uh, wake him up. You know, oh, you know, like you've just died. And of course, you know, it, it, it do the uh, you know the Saint Peter do the Saint Peter routine. Um, unfortunately, I can't be the Saint Peter. It's gonna be have it's gonna have to be somebody you know who's like preferably female to like you know calm him down. Um, okay. Unless, of mm -hmm. course, we want to do the vindictive God version, which is this dolt, because he can't see the same person uh, when he wakes up as you know as, as he does when he you know goes under. Hey Pete, maybe we should take a, a different approach, though. Like instead, instead of juicing him up, if he's sober, and you take a more aggressive thing. Like as I said, you know, we're not maybe cut killing off thumb, cut another off. prisoner. Okay, we're, we're not, not killing. killing people. You not are an unsophisticated lout. We do not kill people. <laughs> At least not without fun. What you're doing is it working? Well, we can well, try this other approach. Well, you're obviously useless to this, you know, this situation, considering you're not helping. <laughs> hey, Pete. So, let's uh, try this approach. Knock him down, bring him back up. Sure, I'll let's break his it. thumbs. How's that going to help? And it's Pete's turn. Hmm. He's going to be drugged up, isn't, isn't that just dulling his senses and playing around? 
so let's rehash this then, okay? Um, okay. Here's what's being suggested um, by... This guy wants to break thumbs. Yes. So and break necks. So Which is... Uh, last e for tra la last resort, I would say. We still want him talking, not screaming. Okay. Screaming's fine. Screaming's fun. No, 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 no. He just wants to kill people. <laughs> um, well, he, dead people can talk, so yeah, let's not. He, well, I can make them talk, but no, they're not going to say what we want them to say. Well, actually, <laughs> they're going to say what I want them to say. But that's not the point. They're okay. not going to tell us what we need to know. <laughs> So guys, so, I need to intervene here for a minute. While the three of you are debating the best course of action to try and get the information you want from Dufresne, um, Pete, give me a clever row, please. There is one. Ads coming up on this. One. Yeah, okay. Um, you start to feel something vibrating on your hip in your pocket, and you realize that your cell phone is ringing. I take a look at the number. Um, you open the phone to look at the number, and you immediately recognize it as being the last number that Joseph Uzma called you from. Mm. I'm going to show it to these guys before I actually pick it up. Should I pick it up? Look. Wait, my phone. Oh. The last number he called us from. If I answer it, then he'll be able to trace it. Exactly. So You presuppose no. he can't trace us already? He already has your number! <laughs> Do you not know how phone tracing works? Oh God! Uh, turn off your phone all Turn off your phone altogether. Smash the it. phone. Yeah. Okay. So, to be clear, are you smashing it or are you answering it? I'm not answering. I'm taking the battery out. Battery out and uh, there's a CMOS battery on board. Kill the phone. Break it. Okay. 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 Fine. So you smash the phone. All right. So We're compromised. The last time that you looked at the time on your phone a few minutes ago before all of this started, we said it was about five after ten. It's now twenty after ten. Um, Let's it, take this guy. We go. We yeah, go now. Yeah. It is a. Um, Give me one more clever roll, please, sir, Pete. Has to be a way of getting the ads off of sleep it up. What's your clever? Sorry? He's got a zero. Yeah, but what's your clever? What is your score? Like your zero. your base clever. One. One. Okay. All right. Um, Heinrich, give me a clever zero. Row. Uh, plus one. Perfect. So yours is a four. Okay. So Pete quickly looks at the phone, looks at you, asks you whether or not you should answer the he should answer the phone or not. Uh, you warn him to not only turn it off but to destroy it, and you immediately realize that oh crap, yes, you are compromised, and you definitely need to grab Dufresne now and get out of Dodge. So grab Dufresne. Yep. So you know what? Knock him out. Give him happy juice. Just knock him out first. Okay. So because we don't have time for this. So we you, can't have him struggling. Yep. So you hit him with the, uh, the good night juice. Yep. Okay. Creepy um, juice. 
How are you doing this? Attach it to an approach, please. Um, I'm just going to have to inject them again. Yep. What approach are you injecting them? You're going to be sneaky, clever, careful, flash. Clever. Or... Clever. Fine. Give me a roll, please. Uh, plus one. So, yeah. I've four. got a total four. Okay, give me one second here. Okay. Oh, yeah. You jab that needle into him. He's like, hey, why? He's done. Okay. So, how are we doing this? How are you making your exit? And throw him onto, throw him onto my shoulder and we get back to that SUV and we bugger. Which way are you exiting the building? Way we came in, fast. Who's going out first? I'll go out first. You'll go out first, okay. So... If he had my number, do you guys still have your cell phones then? No. You would have your guys' numbers as well. So remember, um, Maya's cell phone from the very beginning was broken. of the game was broken and Heinrich didn't have one. So it was strictly your cell phone, Pete. So, you guys run to the back of the warehouse as quickly as you can. Um, Heinrich, your movement is going to be inhibited slightly because you're slugging Dufresne on your shoulder. Um, so, Pete is exiting the warehouse first, he said. So, you run to the back of the warehouse, you run down this hallway, it's uh, Pete followed by Maya, and then you bringing up the rear with Dufresne on your shoulder. Um, Pete, as you exit the warehouse, I need you to give me a quick row, please. Four plus three, a seven. Okay, perfect. So, you exit the warehouse. Got any higher than that? Yep. You oh, that that's beautiful. So you exit the warehouse. As you exit the warehouse and you hang the left to head back to the SUV, you see a black SUV come tearing down the street and into the parking lot, blocking your SUV. Two guys armed with um. Guns, we're going to say machine guns, okay? Two guys armed with machine guns jump out of the SUV. The one guy that jumps out on the passenger side takes his hand, points at the other guy, and goes like this, waving him towards the front door of the warehouse. You hear him scream, go from the front, I'll go from the back. And then he turns and proceeds to head in your direction. Now, at this point, he has not seen you, but there is absolutely no doubt in your mind that you are going to have to neutralize him. It's just a matter of how are you going to neutralize him. So I will remind you that in this alleyway, um, the exits from the side of this warehouse, you have a dumpster up against one side of the building that you could definitely hide behind. On the other side of the dumpster is where you exit to the parking lot at the front of the warehouse, which is where your SUV is parked right now and where the other SUV has blocked you in. Um, give me a clever row as well, please, Pete. Okay, you absolutely know in your gut that this is only the first vehicle. There will be more and they're not far behind. Question, did he leave the engine running? Did they leave the engine running in the uh, other vehicle? Yeah. No. 
You mean he took his keys with him? He jumped out of the vehicle. The car is not running. But obviously, the guy that's coming in Pete's direction has to have those keys because he's the one that got out of the driver's side. Well? So he's coming around the corner? I don't have any guns on me, do I? I don't have anything on me. No, you have a butcher knife on you that you stole from DeFrance. He's coming. We want one alive. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to do. So, try, to, try to pick a spot where I can surprise him when he comes around the corner. Okay. So, that would absolutely be the dumpster. So, you kind of corner yourself in in a crouching position between the wall and the dumpster okay and you definitely are in a position where you will see this guy going by because he's holding this gun muzzle first so when he clears that dumpster the muzzle is going to be the first thing you see um so you definitely are in a position where you could get the drop on him so um. maya um you were bringing up the rear behind uh, Pete. Uh, Heinrich mm -hmm. is still a little distance behind you with Dufresne on his shoulder. Um, I yeah. need you to give me a quick row, please. Okay. Quick row. Okay, so I got a minus one for the roll and... My quick is one, so I'm at zero. You're at, quick. you're at zero. Okay. So you exit into this alleyway <laughs> just in time to see this guy coming down the alleyway near the dumpster with a machine gun. And he saw you. And the first thing mm -hmm. he did was he raised that gun to take a shot. Okay? So, okay. Pete, it's time to act fast. So, this guy's coming down the alleyway. All of a sudden, you see him. He hasn't made it to where you are at the dumpster yet. But you quickly see this. You see this gun come up to bear. And he screams at Maya. And you can tell he's about to pull the trigger. This guy is not here to take hostages at this point. So. I assume because I thought I was like hiding, kind of hiding around. Yep. Hiding in a spot where he has to walk by. Well, and then I can see him. So you, if he, you, so if he, you, you know how garbage dumpsters are kind of on a slope, right? The top, the top of a dumpster is kind of on the slope. So you were crouched down in one corner. And you were waiting for him to come by. And you would have seen the nuzzle or the muzzle clear the end of the dumpster first. Except Maya came out the door behind you. So as he was nearing the end of this dumpster where you were getting ready to, you know, have him go by and then subdue him. Now, just as he got towards the end of the dumpster, Maya comes out of the door. This guy lets out a scream and then brings this gun up to bear. So, you did see it because you heard him scream and you went, huh? So you're going to have to act very quickly now, or Maya's dead. Am I closer? Oh yeah, you're you're closer. I mean, you can you can lunge at this guy right now with that knife. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Am I closer to his front or back? The front. You're definitely okay. at the front. He never made it past the dumpster. 
I'm going to have to lunge her. Okay. That's fine. Lunge knife in hand. Yep. Uh, left or right hand? Right. Right. Okay. Perfect. Um, give me a quick row, please, Pete. Four. Oh, yeah. You come whipping out from the side of this dumpster. He wasn't aware that you were there, okay? But you come lunging forward with this knife. As you come lunging forward at him, your right shoulder catches the barrel or the muzzle of the gun as you lunge forward, and the gun does this. It flies upwards as you knock this guy off balance. He pulls that trigger in shock, hoping that he's going to hit either you or Maya, but instead the bullets fly wildly above both of your heads into the air. Now... And by the way, you're now death. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Um, so we'll get there in a minute, but give me another quick row, please. So that's a seven. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So as the gun... I'm just going to have really bad rolls when I really need them. Oh, wow. Well, as the gun muzzle goes flying into the air and the bullets start spewing out, Okay, um, you plunge this knife directly into this guy's chest. He's dead. Like, he, he hits the ground. He's out. Now, the, the second guy went into the warehouse from the front. This entire exchange has taken no more than 90 seconds. Your issue right now is you don't know if this guy is going to go running back out the front door and come around that alleyway or where he is in that warehouse. He could very well be coming up the other way where Heinrich is with Dufresne right now. Well, either way, you need to uh, pick up the pace. Just go. Okay, so you grab his gun. Are you grabbing the knife as well, or are you going to try and pull it out of the body, or are you just leaving it there and grabbing the gun? Grab the knife too. Okay, perfect. So you've got a knife, and you've got a gun. All and right. your death. Yep, absolutely. So right now, Maya is like, whoa, 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 whoa. you're like, huh? <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm going to point over to where, where the rescue bee was. Yeah. Go with this. Perfect. So you're waving your hand wildly in the direction of the SUV. Um, Maya, you see uh, Pete standing there, and he's wildly waving you towards the front of the building in the direction of where the SUV was. Mm -hmm. You narrowly just avoided getting shot to death. So what are you doing at this point? Okay, would I have seen the fight between Pete and the armed yeah, person? You oh yeah, you almost got killed. No, I know, but I also tried to run away, so I was didn't stand there waiting for it. The the whole way this played out, you didn't have a chance to run. This all happened quick. So you came through the side door out into this alleyway. This guy saw you. He brought the gun up to take a shot at you. Pete saw him bring the gun up. He lunged forward at the guy. Drove the muzzle of the gun into the air with his shoulder while plunging a knife into the guy's chest. The guy fired wildly into the air above your head, just missing you. So you saw 
all of this happen. Now, Pete stands okay. there and he's quickly waving you down the alleyway to uh, get to the, the truck. Uh, I get up. I look behind me to see where Heinrich is because we technically we can't leave without him. Yeah. And I see him coming up from a distance. I will wave at him. I'm still a little shaken, but because I saw Pete beat the other guy, I know that it's clear at that moment. Yep. And then I bolt out. Okay, so you're making a run for the SUV. That's fine. Heinrich, yes. uh, we are going to say that because you are deadlifting an unconscious guy, uh, that you were about 10 feet behind Maya when all of this happened. Do me a favor and give me a clever row, please. Two. Two? Three plus two, five. Five, okay. So you just made it into the hallway with Dufresne on your shoulder when you saw bullets go whizzing by. Like Maya just, she looked utterly shocked that she was still alive, okay? All of a sudden she looked at you and she started waving wildly and then she took off running. Behind you, you hear commotion as this all happens from the warehouse. And then you hear this voice scream. Holy shit, they were waiting for us. We're under fire. So this voice is coming from behind you in the warehouse. Okay. Okay. Doesn't uh, mean difference to me. I'm still going out that door. Yep. So... <laughs> At this point, you need to move, and you need to move quick, or as quick as you can with Dufresne on your shoulder. It now becomes a question of that voice that you heard. You're not sure if he's going to come your way, or if he's going to go back out the other way. Irrelevant. He won't make it around in time, and if he comes through, he the guy's going to be cautious. He doesn't want to get shot. So, either way, it won't make a difference. We're okay. going to make it out to the vehicle before he, he gets to us. Okay. Yep. That's fair. So, um, you haul ass with Dufresne on your shoulder out into this alleyway just in time to look down and see this guy, you know, with this knife wound in his chest laying on... Check his pockets fast. I was checking the pockets as I grabbed the gun well whichever one of you checks his pockets you find a half eaten pack of gum and a set of car keys what no extra ammo reloads nope who walks into a firefight with a gun magazine all right so, Pete, yes, um, I want to understand something. So, you're saying that you are invoking an aspect uh, in this particular scene. Uh, you're saying that you checked this guy after you killed him and found he was wearing a backpack? Oh, oh no, I was just joking about that. Oh, okay. The backpack. Fair enough. Oh, okay. All right, so, Heinrich. Um, you run out into this alleyway just in time to see this guy laying flat on his back with a knife wound in his chest. He is as dead as they come. Uh, you said that you were going to check his pockets? No. Nope? You know, Greg, Greg's character, Pete, already checked the pockets, so keep moving. I mean, okay. we got to get out of here. Yep. So you haul ass down to the front of this alleyway. Um, you find both Pete and Maya already back at your SUV. Um, the hatch is open on the back of the SUV, waiting for you to throw Dufresne's unconscious body back into the car. Um, I'm assuming you do this? Yep. Okay, in order of 
who is seated where i need to know who is driving this vehicle who's in the passenger seat and who's in the back i will be driving again i don't trust these two buffoons okay who's in the passenger seat Buffoon. who's in the back passenger seat you're in the passenger seat all right yeah i get them back in so you Good. you can all, keep an eye on uh, you train. all throw yourselves into this suv with a very strong sense of urgency, Heinrich starts this thing up and proceeds to back this thing out onto the street. Now, as Heinrich is backing this vehicle up, you realize that this other SUV is still in front of you. Okay? Um, in front I was actually it, it, ask. So, so it's in front so you're sorry you're backing this suv up okay getting ready to pull out onto the street but remember this black suv cornered you so someone needs to do something about this car because when they that's what i was going to ask again when we went around the corner yeah when you pulled in you parked this vehicle and when these guys showed up i told you that they cornered your vehicle in that parking lot as the two of them jumped out of their vehicle. So Maya, go. Someone needs to either move this vehicle or you guys are going to have That's to That's going to be through. Maya or it's going to be Pete, one or the other. And I trust Maya more than I trust Pete right now. Hmm. If I would have moved it, if I was going around the corner with keys in my hand, if I saw a block, then I would have gone and moved it So did, did you find keys when you killed that guy? Yeah. He's yes, on he it. Yeah. So, I'm sorry, what was that? Yes, he did. We've already established that when Pete... Okay, so here, pocket, toss me the... Okay, perfect. So you toss Maya the keys. She jumps out of her vehicle. Okay, I'm losing audio again. <laughs> God, this is... Back up a bit. If we, As soon as I came okay. around the corner, if I saw the SUV blocking us, I would have gone and moved that SUV first before even jumping in seen that walking around the corner that we couldn't get out we've done it right there all right so heinrich you come running out of this warehouse with dufresne on your shoulder you run down this alleyway you see this guy dead on his back with a knife wound in his chest um you come around to the front of the building where you find pete and maya standing there at your suv waiting for you the back of the suv is open waiting for you to dump dufresne in which you are obviously going to do and then you pile into this suv now in the meantime pete has already taken it upon himself to move the black suv that had the three of you pinned in just to be clear heinrich you're driving again yep pete's in the passenger seat at the front and Maya, you're in back, correct? I guess so. All right, perfect. <laughs> yep. So you jump into this SUV, you start it up, and you're getting ready to haul ass with a major sense of urgency. As you begin to pull out of this parking lot, this other guy comes whipping out of the warehouse and starts wildly firing at your vehicle um heinrich give me a quick row please we have already established that the vehicle is equipped with bulletproof windows what is your quick, okay what's your quick please uh two with a minus one so a quick is one quick of one okay um the bullets hit the front end of the vehicle. Specifically, they hit the radiator at the front. So, you know, in between... Oh, this is an armored SUV. I don't know why, why we're worried about it. Yeah, okay. That's fine. <laughs> so, they have hit the front of the vehicle. It's armored. You're saying it's not doing any damage. So you continue to haul ass now this guy has not clued in he's still hoping that if he fires enough bullets 
that he's going to end up accomplishing something. The question becomes, do you want to neutralize this guy before he draws more unwanted attention? Or are you just going Chase to... Chase us like a, T2, uh, like a T-1000? Nah, it's fine. We'll just get out of here. Just take off. Okay, perfect. So You're not going to run him over? See, I was half expecting... What kind of sick person are you? Man, I was half expecting Pete in the driver or in the passenger seat to unroll the window and just start hosing him down with that gun. But anyways, that's fine. So you guys don't neutralize him. Um, All right. He... Pete's got a really bad headache right now, and uh, he's probably not feeling good for other weeks. And Pete, on Pete, top also, of that, Pete also cannot hear anything that's being said right now because he's dead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, so this entire encounter has taken up until ten thirty in the morning. Okay, you are once again on the road with Dufresne, who you still need to get information from. Where are you headed? And when you get there, I need to know two things. I need to know who's interrogating him and how you're approaching it. So where are we going? How about the theater with the body, body parts? Uh, oh, unless there's another safe house you want to go to. That's compromised, never mind. Why do you assume okay, I have safe house. houses everywhere? Because you said you do. That's not Unless the point. my thing was cutting. <laughs> oh, so where is your safe house? Let's go to your place. And then let's pork it and set it on house. fire. I'm not, a, I'm not a crazy doctor like you. Okay, so, road trip. Someone needs to pick a destination, and someone needs to get down to business with Dufresne. Where are we going? Uh, mm. All right. Well, we'll head to a corner store upstairs where I have another safe house. But I'm running out of safe houses. Okay. Or I can take you to a, uh, to a dig outside out of A dig, of yes. Town. Let's go to a dig. Let's go to a dig outside of town. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, so, Maya... <laughs> Tell us about this dig you're directing them to. So, as an archaeologist, what kind of dig is taking place outside of the city? Uh, well, it's about 45 minutes outside of the city. No, 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 no. It doesn't necessarily no. too if well you say it's 45 minutes outside of the city, we're driving really, really fast, okay? I do not want to be anywhere near Pete <laughs> when he hits the four hour mark. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I'm okay. kicking his ass um, out of the vehicle and we're driving without him <laughs> okay, okay no. so obviously this that's what it is, it's about four. so th this 45 minute dig site is now off the agenda so oh no you... no, it's still on the uh, agenda it's I just can drive really 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 fast Okay. okay, fine. So we, I guess we're still going to that dig. It's temporarily okay. shut down. Uh, so what time we is were it right now? To dig for 10:30. Some art 10:30. Okay, we got about five we don't minutes have all the to spare tools. if I drive really, really fast. We got five minutes to spare if okay, I drive really, really, fast. Go, 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 go. Just don't go, get a speeding go, ticket, go. huh? Okay, so go, gadget, go. So, Maya, we are going to a dig site that is about 45 minutes outside of the city. Heinrich is driving like a battle to hell because he doesn't want to have to clean up the mess in the car. Um, you are going to tell us a little bit about this dig site so we have some context. Um, obviously, you were digging for some artifacts. Um, Tell us very quickly what artifacts you were hoping to find at this dig site and what your row at that dig site is. All right. So it's, um, let's see. Okay, of course I'm drawing blank now. Okay, so we're looking for artifacts that have to do with the history of our city. And they were what they're supposed to or what we're looking for are a whole bunch of uh, vases that were hand engraved with 
symbols that are supposed to, you know, give us uh, or reveal more information about the history of our city. So they will have historical value. They're supposed to go on display in the museum. They're supposed to be this big deal to see what, you know, what can we, what we can learn from them about our history. Okay. Uh, and at this point, it got shut down or temporarily put on hold because we need some additional equipment uh, and preservatives, things that we can, you know, you, for the artifacts and to um, protect them once they are out in the open. Okay. And what was your row at this site? Uh, well, I'm supposed to be, you know, the chief archaeologist overlooking the site. Okay, fair enough. All right, so... so I you... know it well, supposedly. Okay, perfect. So you are on a road trip to a dig site that is 45 minutes outside the city. Uh, Heinrich is hauling ass like a battle to hell because he's worried about the mess he's going to have to clean up. <laughs> I'm not cleaning this mess up. I just don't want to coexist in it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um... Heinrich, I'm going to ask you to give me five quick rows, okay? We are saying that it's 10.30 in the morning now. You figure that if you drive at your pace, that you can be there with five minutes to spare. These quick rows are to determine whether or not you encounter any uh, unforeseen circumstances like a cop like a cop like how fast you're speeding okay so quick number one is plus one okay you're good quick number two is minus one minus so minus so my quick is one okay and you got a minus one no my quick is two Okay. Two minus the one. Is two. So, okay. You're good. Go. Quick number three is two plus three. You're Five, yeah. You're good. Quick number four is uh, two plus zero. Okay. <laughs> so. You can either use a fate point to re-roll that, or you will deal with the outcome of that row. Fate point. Okay, re-roll it. Same. Same? Same. Two. Oh, oh yeah. Um, Maya, how far away from this dig site are we at this point, uh, based on how fast Heinrich has been driving? Um. I'd say we're about 10 minutes out now. About 10 minutes. He's, he's been flying. Okay. He's been flying. And as much as he has been flying up until about 10 minutes before you were about to reach that dig site, nothing happened. It was clear sailing. Okay. Mm -hmm. About 10 minutes out. Heinrich went ripping through a speed trap, and the cops loved him for it. You now have a police cruiser in pursuit of your vehicle, sirens blaring, and, so? and this guy is absolutely intent on pulling you over. So... so? Let's figure out how we're going to do this. Do you now have a vehicle in pursuit of you? Where are we going? Are we still heading for the stake site? Hell yeah. Okay. Try to lose him. I Come guess. on. Remember, because I brought a gun with us. Yep, you definitely did bring a gun. Okay, give me another quick row, Heinrich. Two minus one. So what is that exactly, please? It's one. One. 
Okay, this cop realizes very quickly that you have no intention of stopping, so he's radioed for backup. Um, by the time you rip through not the following intersection, but the one after it, you now have two police cruisers in pursuit of you. That's it? At this point, that's it. Yes. So. Okay. You, okay, so you, so you got to lose them. Yep. So you've made it to the stake site, and you have two cop cruisers that a that are a matter of a couple of minutes behind you. It is now 10.55 in the morning. Okay, so... Your time. What's that? Time to use the clever and hide behind a uh, billboard. Okay. You know, the, the, the typical um, uh, Back to the Future thing, right? So, you know, so, you, so hold on, though. So then we are saying you are not right at the dig site yet. That's fine. So you're going to Well, no, there's going to be... There's a billboard that says, you know, dig site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 well, okay, hold on. Not exactly, okay. but we can say there's a billboard. Who is spending the fate point for this? Is Maya spending it because it's. Yeah, I said that I would spend it, but I don't know if you heard me the first time. Okay, so you're spending it. Okay, so Maya, that yes. takes you down to, to two. Two, two fate points for this particular session. Okay, so. Yep. I'm like down to one, okay? Come on, guys. That's okay. Well, that's why I'm helping you I, out, I've been dude. using my points, man. Just okay. getting your asses out of the fire. So, oh, give, give, yeah, me, give me a clever row, Maya. Okay, you have my sheet? Because I closed my sheet. Nope, that's fine. Your sheet. clever is three. So, give me a is second. It? Okay. Yep, your clever Maya is... I'm just going to double check it's this. It's three. Your, yep, your so... clever is a three. Okay, so I rolled a one, so that's four. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Two confused-looking cop cruisers go whipping by. Ha-ha! <laughs> we did it! Yep. <laughs> so, they take off speeding <laughs> by. Okay. And now you are hiding behind the billboard at this dig site. It's 10, okay. it's 10 55. Um, Pete. Open the door and kick Pete out of the vehicle. <laughs> Pete, give me Pete. a. Pete, um, you could walk. Run out the vehicle, but do not go to the digs inside of the dig site. Pete, give do me. Do not a, Pete, dishonor me a, my uh, site. Yeah, whatever. Pete, but give I will, me a, I will uh, kick you out. Give, give me a clever roll, please, Pete. Zero. Zero. Okay. Um, yeah, you're still feeling fine. Not everyone's panicking and telling you to get out of the car, like you just, you know. Did we have the plague. Like, like, like you get out of the, yeah, get like, out. Like you dropped <laughs> something you shouldn't have dropped, but you're you're a little confused because you're feeling fine. Uh huh. That's exactly what happens right at, until the last possible moment. Out of the car now. <laughs> okay, so um, someone needs to tell me who is going to question Dufresne now and where you are questioning him at the dig site. Okay, of course. So so we are going to go inside of the dig site. We're going to go to an underground room okay. because we have those at dig sites. Okay. So, it's a dig site. Okay, so, it's mine. <laughs> okay. So this is, and, hold on, Maya. Hold on. This is perfect. Yeah. yeah yes. We'll get there. Yes. So um, is the this, pilot has to drag him. Is this dig site cordoned off by any form of fencing. I have to believe that there's going to be something preventing unwanted visitors from getting into this dig site while you are temporarily out of business. Yes. So, yes, of course, there is a fencing and there is a gate, security gate with a keypad. Okay. And... Guess what? I know the code because okay. it's my site. So are you? And leaving? Pete is walking from the billboard. Oh, hold on. Are you? Leaving? 
<laughs> are you leaving this car parked behind the billboard, or are you going to pull it into? The no, we're driving the bill. We're driving the car up, but Pete gets out now. Okay, Pete. They're, Pete they're... Go on. They're, they're... No, I can go. No, you're you're out. You're getting out. I will shoot you if you do not get out of the vehicle. <laughs> so, Pete, um, Heinrich and Maya are trying to kick you out of the car like you are about to spontaneously combust. Um, are you getting out of this car? Just drive to where we're stopping. No, get out of the car now. You can walk there. It's a it dozen start Get out of the car. This is not negotiable. <laughs> I will shoot you. Bear in mind that Pete's the one holding the uh, semi auto. Yes, and I have my pistol. He has to actually maneuver the damn thing to try and get one of us. I've got my pistol. I can go like this and go bang, okay? Get out. Okay, um, it is now 10.57 in the morning. Uh, Pete, <laughs> give, Pete, give me another clever row. Okay, if he explosively, like, you know, because he's going to explosively uh, project from both directions. I do not want to be in this vehicle when that happens. Do you have a spare vehicle at the site? Please tell me you have a spare bear pickup at the site. I have a Jeep. Two. Two. Okay. Gurgo. 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 Get out. Get your, out. Your, your, okay. stu your stomach suddenly does not feel good. And it's like that. One minute you were fine. The next minute your stomach feels like somebody is twisting it. Get it's a close out. Close body. It's a construction site. They'll have a. Uh, they'll have one. Well, the good news is, it is a dig site. They do have one. The bad news is, you're nowhere near it because they pulled off behind a billboard to hide the car from the cops. Maya has already confirmed that she has to enter in a security code on a keypad to get into the dig site. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to kick you out of the vehicle behind this billboard. Going into that dig site, you're still about 50 or 60 feet away from where she has to enter in the uh, security code. And the porta potties that you're talking about are on the other side of that fence. Well, you guys better drive. That's why I said, keep, I said, throw all the bitching and whining. I said, keep driving. We would have been in there already. I'm getting out of the car, and um, I'm going to go grab uh, Dufresne, and I'm going to walk the rest of the distance to the okay. uh, so you're to the gra fence. you're grabbing That's Dufresne. it. I'm not staying in this car. That, that's fine. So you're grabbing Dufresne. Yes. So you walk around to the back of the vehicle. You open up the hatch to grab Dufresne, who you carefully... Well, I'm going to say you carelessly threw in head first into the back of the <laughs> SUV. And it, it makes sense. I mean, you were you were running like I that. wouldn't have just thrown him randomly into well, the vehicle. Well, either way, he went in head first. So as you open up the hatch and go to grab Dufresne, I need you to give me a quick roll. We would have been in there five minutes ago if you guys kept driving. Close. <laughs> Uh, plus two on quick two. Okay, give me a second. Oh, yeah. You lift up the hatch, and you go to grab Dufresne by the feet, and he kicks you right in the chest. Uh-huh. Okay. He suddenly asks forward scurries to get out of that SUV and makes a run for it. Down. When his hands and feet are tied? He's tied. His hands are tied. You tied him 
to a chair. You did not take. You a had chair. one job. You one, <laughs> one job. <laughs> you, you tied him to a chair. When you untied him, no one said anything about tying his feet. So one job. This guy, one. This guy's making a run for it now. Oh. Ironically, he's running down the side of the SUV that Pete is currently sitting in. Pete. Oh, this is going to be gross. Oh, God. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. Pete, give me a quick roll, please. Oh, this is I said, if you drove in five minutes ago, none of this would be going on. No, we couldn't have driven in there in time. We could have. Instead of behind here, we could have. The one. It's over. Oh, yeah. We're not using this car again. <laughs> it's okay. I have a Jeep. You, not as big okay, as the car. You, Pete, thank you. You, you thank have you. the one job. One job. Right now one to job. Stop to pray. <sighs> okay. Heinrich has, Heinrich has opened up the hatch of this vehicle. <laughs> Dufresne was playing possum. He hauled off and kicked Heinrich right in the chest. Heinrich was not expecting this. He stumbled backwards in shock. Dufresne asked his way out of the back of the SUV and took off running in whatever direction he could think of to run. And in a panic, he ran down the driver's side of the SUV. You heard Heinrich take the kick to the chest. And then driver you, side or passenger side? He's he, like he, Pete he, on the passenger side. Yes, he's running down the passenger side. Pete has seen Dufresne coming in the mirror on the passenger side of the vehicle. So you definitely have the opportunity to stop him. Door him. Yeah, let him open the door. I can throw the door open. Okay, you throw the door open. Um, give me one second here. Boom! Runs right into the door. <laughs> Falls backwards. Smashes himself off the ground. So, he's groaning. Oh! So, he's hurt. Someone's got to pick him up. It kind of makes thought sense. That, kind of makes I, I would have thought that my drugs would last longer than 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, they didn't. So, someone's got to pick him up, and it kind of makes sense to me that it be... It's going to be me. Oh, oh, kinda, yep. oh, nope, hold on. I need a quick row from Heinrich, and I need a quick row from Pete. Oh, no. Quick plus two, four. Okay. <laughs> What's your quick Sorry, row? quick, uh, four. four. Pardon me? Sorry, last time should have been too too higher. I was looking at clever. That, that's okay. So you got a four as well. Okay. So Pete, you're closer. You're gonna get to Hein, or you're gonna get to Dufresne first to pick him up. Oh no. So Feeling, uh, I, uh, I am. Do you have a hose? Do you have a hose at the uh, at the site? Because we're gonna need a hose. <laughs> so... We're so gonna need a hose. <laughs> Oh my god, we're gonna need a hose. Well, I'll have to look. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there is a hose. I okay. can't think right now. So, Pete, Pete just stand over there. <laughs> so, Pete, you pick up Dufresne, okay? No, I'm not picking him up. I said I'm not picking I said if I. I don't think Pete is in any condition to pick up anyone. Be, I'm not in any condition. Oh, no. So, okay, you're not picking him up, okay. So Heinrich is coming around the vehicle to pick up Dufresne, and Pete, give me a uh, careful row, please. <laughs> this is the big moment, I think. This is uh, two. Oh yeah, um, you really don't feel good, and you know you better get out of that SUV, like, right now. Give, I get out. Get, okay, perfect. Um, give me another row, please. I uh, need a 
quick. Seven. Perfect. And so you definitely get all that SUV, and things don't feel right. It is 10.59 in the morning. It is three hours and 59 minutes from the point where Heinrich gave you the Heinrich special. Give me a uh, clever roll. All right, wait, wait. let me interject. Let me grab Dufresne and drag him out of the, you know, the, the, the zone. <laughs> what? <Whatever. laughs> this is the only chance. Is this game? Game? No, no, g give me a clever roll, please. For me? Nope, for... Uh, uh one. Oh, Pete. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, both ends. Oh, this is going to be bad. <laughs> bad. Oh. What's you doing? <laughs> so what's you doing? So okay. Pete, um, you don't know what's happening. You, I do. You, you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah your, uh, your team's doctor definitely does know what's happening. So... You don't know exactly what's happening, but you remember Heinrich saying something about some kind of side effect about four hours after he gave you the uh, the stimulant. Um, I need both Heinrich and Pete to roll their quicks, please. Quick is two plus two, four. Three. Okay. Heinrich, you yank Dufresne by his shoulders. Just in time. Out of the path of destruction. <laughs> Just in time. Um, Pete, I need a clever row and a quick row please start with your clever clever is a two okay don't give me the quick yet and okay. a quick that's fine go ahead what's your quick two, two? okay pete it's 11 a.m you have two choices and this came oh. out of nowhere you know for a fact that you basically have to drop your shorts right where you are as quickly as you can or you're going to need a change of clothes. And I don't have that at the dig site, okay? I use the, I use the SUV to keep me up. Okay, you grab onto the side of this SUV, down come the shorts and out comes the tsunami right there on the side. <laughs> I can't even say this with a straight face. Yes, but you're forgetting something. <laughs> oh, hold on, we haven't got there yet. Right there <laughs> on the side of the road. Okay, so not in the car. It, it, it is like a wave of crap. Something. Now, um, Heinrich, how long is this explosive diarrhea supposed to last for? Ten minutes. <laughs> um, oh. would that would that not kill him? Ten minutes. <laughs> it won't kill him. <laughs> I might kill him afterwards <laughs> for not dropping him into the site. Okay. Fine. So I'm going to rub will, Heinrich. He will probably get it you were dead, oh, but okay. it won't <laughs> kill him. So Heinrich, hold on. Um, ten minutes of explosive. Um, shit. So both ends. Both ends. From both ends. Okay. So you're telling me that it's crap, vomit, crap, vomit, crap, vomit. At the same time. Okay. You know what? So crap and vomit. That, that, that actually seems a little excessive. And if you want to accomplish that, that's going to require a fate point. You Joe, are, I have nothing you, you're, you're going to have to invoke an aspect if that's what you intended. Ah, uh, you know what? I'm not that evil. I'm not that evil. 
I've really? got better things to, to waste with my people. Hey! Okay, so hold on. Hey, you. Because he's only got one left right now. So if he uses that, that's it for this game session. He will refresh it free in the next session. Yes, no, but exactly. The question is, does he want to refresh it I am it not free? that much of a bastard. Okay, okay I'm not that so much of a bastard. Then realistically, let's assume that it is not vomit. It is diarrhea, and let's realistically assume that this is going to last for about four to five minutes. Unfortunately, it's right there on the side of the road while Pete is using the SUV to support himself. Now, about 11.04, 11.05, Pete is feeling uh, somewhat humiliated, okay? <laughs> The problem is that not only is he feeling humiliated, he's also not feeling the effects of that stimulant anymore. And the reality of the concussion that he sustained has started to set back in. Pete, I need you to give me a quick row, please. One. One. Pete, um, you fall backwards, and you fall backwards right into the mess that you have just created. <laughs> I, am really, uh. I am really sorry. Um, mm -hmm. In the meantime, mm. though, Dufresne has been propped up. And he to sees, watch this whole shit show, yes. Yes. He, <laughs> yes. He, he sees this entire fiasco play out, including Pete falling backwards into his own mess. Mm. Um, and he looks directly at Heinrich and he says, you fucking people are sick. <laughs> and my response would be, uh, do you Heinrich, want what he has? <laughs> Heinrich, I can oh, yeah, provide yeah, 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 Actually, Heinrich, I need you to roll your clever right now. Clever? Clever three, uh, minus one, two. Okay. You, you definitely realize that where your drugs didn't succeed, the threat of going through the same thing that Pete just went through seems to really unsettle Dufresne. It unsettles him enough that you realize that you can exploit this to try and get the information you want. I won't give him what I uh, give you what I gave him. Tell me what I want to know. He looks at Pete, who does not look happy at this point. Or healthy, or in any, and, any shape, way, or and form. And he looks at you, and he says, I'm dead either way, and that is a fate worse than death. So, he looks at you, and he says, what do you want to know? Who are well, they? First, let's go, in. let's oh. go inside before let's we're go spotted. Inside. Let, let, let's go inside. And let's discuss this like civilized human beings. Yes, let's. Okay, hold on. Uh. Hold on, though, okay? Pete is now, I'm sorry to say this, a shit-covered shit mask. <laughs> And he's laying there on the ground, and he no longer is feeling the way he did a couple of hours ago, because your stimulant, Heinrich, has has worn. run out. So at this point, someone needs to be helping Pete mm -hmm. because again, he still has a concussion. I I've got the prisoner. The... <laughs> I I've got well, the prisoner. I can't pull up a muscle man. Are you kidding me? Besides, you need me to find your way around the site and to get in. Ah, uh, yes, but that's why. You can carry Pete 
And oh, like, you know. Hold on, what are you saying? Don't no point at me. <laughs> Yeah. I have no idea what you're saying. Pete needs help. What did you I've just got say? I've brain. I mean, you know, I got to keep him, you know, handled. So, ah, I'm sure. Yo, well, Pete, can you get up? I'm not going to try up? to pull you up. Pete, I don't have a strength. Do me a can you get up on your own? Mm. We're gonna we're gonna see if Pete can get up on his own. Uh, Pete, give me a quick roll, please. Nope. What's your number? I just did it. it was a zero. Okay. So Pete attempts to get up. He barely makes it up and he falls right back down into that mess. Someone. <laughs> so Heinrich. Give me a clever row, please. Uh, three minus one, two. Okay. Your medical expertise, such as it is, tells you from the way Pete looks, and I'm not talking, you know, the mess that he's now covered in. I'm talking physically the way he looks, that either someone is going to have to help him or you are going to have to offer him another shot of that stimulant. So, Pete, giving you a choice. Got a game? So, Heinrich has realized, Pete, that you're not going to be able to move on your own. <laughs> He's making an offer to you. He is either offering you another shot of that stimulant, or one of them is going to have to help you up. That's better to help me out. Taking the stimulant. All right. You asked in the first place, so you knew what you were getting yourself into. I warned you. So. So. Yes. So. One of you two is going to have to give Pete a helping hand. Uh, there isn't much I can do. He's Mr. Muscle and I'm like, what? Well, he just needs support. What does Richard, does she say? He, he needs someone to give him a helping hand, a shoulder to, you know, support him with. <laughs> Let's hope there's a hose on site. Um, I guess I could try, but you, Pete, you really have to, you know, right. keep some distance there. I'll, all, all I'll right. see what I can do. I'm so, not that strong. So, Maya, you, you walk, know, you yes, walk, you walk over, and there's no way about this. You are walking directly into this. And you are going to have to get down on one knee, put your arm around Pete, and try and prop him up with your shoulder. So his arm on your shoulder, his hand on the other side, and you trying to help push him up. There is absolutely no way whatsoever that you are getting out of this without experiencing some of what Pete just went through. Okay, how much does Pete weigh? Uh, uh, 240. Yeah, about 240. And I'm sorry? Like, that's weighs, double your mass. Yeah. I'm like 115 pounds. Yep. I'm like 115 pounds. How yep. do you expect me to do that? Yeah, there, there is no way. If, 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 if we drove straight in, we wouldn't be at this problem. Yeah, if if she tries to help him up, Heinrich, that's not going to happen. And then you're not going to. Do I have to think of everything? Me? Yes, you do. Uh, I am obviously the brains of. You're the one who inject. Yes, you are, and you're the one who injected him with that. So help him out. All right. You know what? 
Okay, Open give me your pistol and give me the frame. Do you even know how to use a gun? Maybe. Do you want a demonstration? <laughs> just open the safety and I'll... Open the safety. Let's, let's, let's just open the safety for all I of us, right? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so... Oh my god, let's just open the safety. Okay, so <laughs> is this agreed on? You're giving her a gun, she's going to... I am not giving her my gun. Okay. Um, Maya, give me a, give me a give clever me. roll, please. All right. Let's. No. no okay. Oh, you dear. know what? Check the the back of the SUV. See if there's an emergency kit with an emergency blanket that we can wrap around Happy Boy here, and like you know, <laughs> help like lift and maybe a bit of rope. That way we can lift him, lift his ass off the ground, and like you know, carry him in. The, the end okay. So the end result here, first of all, Maya, what's your clever row? Hold on. Oh, wow. Uh, so I got a three with my roll, and my clever is three, so I'm at a six. So Heinrich is pushing back on giving you a firearm, but then you remember that there is a machine gun sitting in the front passenger side of the vehicle that Pete left there when he had to make a hasty exit. So you really don't need Heinrich's gun. You can always go grab the machine gun. Right. Okay. Yep. I'll go grab it. Fine. You grab the machine gun. Dufresne is escorted into the back. Be back in a sec. Of, sure. Dufresne is escorted into the back of the SUV again. He gets in there willingly because now the fret of, you know, the drug that Heinrich is going to hit him with is, you know, firmly entrenched in his brain. Uh, a fate <laughs> which he has described as being worse than the death he sure is awaiting him. Okay. And Heinrich is now free to help Pete out of his shitty situation. <coughs> We're going to need more than one wet wipe. <laughs> I think so, huh? Okay, so... You know what? Check to see if there's an emerg a blanket or whatnot. An emergency kit in the back. There should be one. This is... We stole this off of, like, you know... What? Uh, Interpol guys. So there, there's going to be at least some type of, you know, med kit uh, standard pack in the back. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you invoking this as an aspect? Sure. Fine. You're down to uh, your final fate point has been used for this session. Uh, okay. you, you rummage around in the back of the vehicle. You, like find, it, uh... you, you find a loose um, floorboard in the vehicle. You pop it up and tell me what you find in that floorboard. A uh, couple bottles of emergency water. Um, you know, just an emergency breakdown kit. Blanket. Flares, the usual, you know, the uh, small medical kit. Okay. Okay. So you found the stuff that you need. So the question yep. now becomes, um, how are you going to help Pete up? All right. Well, Pete, give me your hand. So I pull right. Pete, lift him up. Assume the position on the vehicle so I can wash you down. So you're going to throw bottles of water on Pete to try and wash some of this off? Yes. Fine. Either that or we strap him to the roof. Fine. Done. <laughs> um, we're going to say that you managed to wrap, or sorry, wash about 25% of the overall mess off of Pete. Pete needs to change of clothes. There's no middle ground on this one now. Yeah. Okay. Pete needs a change of clothes. A hot shower, and Pete definitely feels like he needs some alcohol right now. Uh, yeah, with a concussion, nice call. Yeah. All right, so well, we're, we're 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 rubbing alcohol to pour it on me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, so give Pete the the uh, the emergency blanket. Let's just get him back in the car and. Okay. Pete's in the car. You now windows are. Yep. Roll down the windows. Oh my god. Yep. 
You and let's roll up. The okay, so you row up to the security gate of this uh, dig site. Maya enters her security code. You drive in. You find somewhere out of sight to park the vehicle. Um, you get out of the vehicle. Pete is still going to need someone to prop him up because, again, Pete's concussed. Okay? And someone is going to have to also get Dufresne out of the vehicle. Okay. So. Okay, and I still have that machine gun, right? Yes, yes you do. So, Maya, um, you can definitely. So. You can hold the gun on Dufresne and get him moving. Okay, but hold on. Heinrich, get out of the mm -hmm. car come talk to me privately. Okay. Uh, how do I use this gun again? <laughs> can you show me what I do? Do with Ma the gun if Maya. I need to use it? Maya. A lane for his foot? Hey, Maya. What? Yes. As, yes. A, re as a reminder to you, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. And again, this is documented on your character sheet. Um, uh-huh. Your stunt is survival of the fittest. You get a plus two when it quickly evading situations that threaten your survival. So I am actually going to tell you, you know basically how to use a gun, okay? Um, you're, mm -hmm. not, you're not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, like a small gun, a pistol, not if, a machine if gun. If you had to figure this out on the fly, I think it's something that your character would be able to do. Okay. okay. So sure. you can definitely question Heinrich on the basics, but <clears throat> I, I'm going to tell you that once he tells you how to do it, we're going to say that this is something you're going to absorb very quickly. So for the purposes of wrapping today up, because I know that we need to do this, I'm going to intervene, say that Heinrich has explained to you how to use that gun, and now you have a firm understanding of the basics of, you know, getting Dufresne moving at the muzzle of a gun. So you both get back in the vehicle where Pete is still kind of, you know, eh, and you now need to figure out exactly what to do. Where are you taking them to get the answers you need from Clint Dufresne? You are the one who knows, yeah. what, knows this facility. We know nothing. Exactly. Yes, yes. All so, yours. Yes. So we've got a couple of rooms underground. We're going to go to one of those rooms. Okay. So We're going to how... tie him up to a chair. How far underground is this day? Um, well, there is a service elevator that we have to take down. Okay. It's about a couple of floors. And I, and I have the uh, code to activate it. Is there the possibility, and I'm going to tell you that if you create this as a uh, aspect it will cost you a fate point Maya but is there the okay. possibility of there being like um, overalls or something there that Pete can change into Dig site. people are going to leave clothing exactly. there because that's a change in and out yes okay so I have yep. no problem with Pete running around in the buff but I mean Pete might uh, no, thank you. Spare me. Yeah, we'll find him something, I'm sure. Fine, so you go... And there are washrooms and stuff downstairs, so, you know, some, you know, okay. hoses okay. and water or whatever. Fair enough. So you go into this underground dig site. Um, as you get to the service elevator that goes down into the lower levels, we will assume that there is a... Uh, construction trailer there that at the very least will have uh, a shower a shower and a place where Pete can get changed into uh, some working overalls so we're going to say that Pete gets a pair of, himself up. yeah so Pete basically right now has on a pair of 
orange um an orange jumpsuit basically and he's found a pair of construction boots that'll fit him so that he can discard the clothes that he's wearing right now and you guys have given him a few minutes to have a shower and uh, get his wits about him okay so while Pete is having his shower you're sitting in this construction trailer waiting for Pete to finish Dufresne is sitting there strapped to a chair and he looks at you and he says their name is the Brotherhood of Fate. Between them and Uzma, I was caught in the middle. And this is what they want. And that's where we're going to wrap it up, guys. So this is the... Okay, hold on a second. Hold on. Sorry. Let's establish two things, though. Sure. Number one, we've tied his legs. Yes. So he can just run. Number two, because one we're underground, job. there is one. no... No signal... Oh, shush. There is no signal of any kind that will come through. Okay. So let's... I know we don't have cell phones. That's okay. But we're not... You know, there's no signal of any kind. That, that's fine. So here's what we're going to establish. Through fear of going through the same experience that he witnessed Pete go through at the hands of Heinrich, um, Dufresne doesn't seem as inclined to evade the line of questioning now. So when we start the next game session, Dufresne is definitely going to explain to you who the Brotherhood of Fate are and why they are at odds with Joseph Uzma and why you have all been in the middle of it in the middle of this okay so we're going to establish that right now um, the second thing we're going to establish is yes you are underground the only way out is the way that you came in okay but you are on the upper excuse me the upper level of this dig site there is a service elevator that will take you down to the dig site okay so we've established both of those points um, we will also establish that when we begin the next game session Heinrich is refreshing at three fate points Maya you are actually going to refresh at five because you've only used one fate point this game sorry no okay. no sorry four because you actually used two you used one for the billboard and one for pete's change of clothes and pete oh, that's nice. um you didn't actually use um you used one fate point to save maya from that gunshot so you're gonna refresh at five okay all right so guys that has been this week's episode of as fate would have it uh from ken geek games and collectibles again thank you very much to chris anthony and i think greg may have had to leave early but thank you to all of them again for joining us and we'll be back next weekend to continue this story until then thanks as always for joining in and watching until next time ciao for now thanks bye, -bye.